Hi, everybody. Welcome to Dana of All Trades. This is my third Table Talk Tuesday, and I have a special guest today, my stepbrother, Mikey. My name is Mo Butters <laughs> in the building. I got the Stone Cold Cakes channel. Thanks for tuning in today. <laughs> my Instagram is stone underscore cold underscore kicks. Follow him, guys. I got shoes, all type of cool stuff. I got videos on YouTube. You can check out the YouTube at Stone Cold Kicks. And I do all type of shoe related stuff, fashion. And I just show a lot of cool stuff that I have and a lot of stuff that I'm doing. And I'm going to be pumping a lot more videos. And I got giveaways also on my channel for like shoes and shoe related stuff. This is our third Table Talk Tuesday for Dana of All Trades. For those of you that haven't attended a Table Talk, the original inspiration for it was to inspire people to have conversations, to ask questions that we don't normally ask, and to further get to know the people that we think we know. What we want to talk about is what media did you watch or listen to as a kid that you probably shouldn't have? So something that you were like really into when you were younger and it's completely inappropriate. Oh, totally. Yeah. So we have like, I'm sure you can think of countless examples. Yeah. Everything I was into when I was a little kid was pretty much inappropriate for my age range. Definitely. Both of us, we grew up too fast in a crazy household. So our parents, they gave us you know, good examples of things not to do and <laughs> examples of, you know, stuff that's crazy in the world. So we had plenty of stuff like, you know, I listened to Ice T when I was a very little kid, Ice Cube. That was my dad's two favorite rappers. And I was, you know, heavily influenced. I liked to rap a lot. So that was, um, you know, I just turned into a big rap head kid. And I was only like five, six, seven mm -hmm. years old listening to all that stuff. I would be singing the songs and stuff too. You know, Baby Got Back and all that. <laughs> and uh, I was just heavily influenced by a lot of different medias. That's just some of the music, but then, you know, we watched all adult movies and TV shows mm -hmm. and stuff, too, so. 100. They did not filter us, especially the way people are filtered today. Oh, yeah, Beavis and Butthead. We watched Beavis and Butthead. Um, that was, like, our jam. Yeah, Beavis and Butthead is my shit. I used to, actually, it was about a year. I think it was when we were in third grade or something. I did nothing but talk about, you know, talk like <laughs> Beavis. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will just talk like that. You know, I was probably saying curse words and being bad and stuff, too. And I was only, like, eight years old, maybe. Yep. But that's how it goes. And, you know, we're allowed to get away with stuff like that. It maybe wasn't right, but it turned me into the person that I am today. So <laughs> it's all good. I would never let my five-year-old nephew watch Beavis and Butthead. just wouldn't happen. Yeah, everybody's different. <laughs> um, so Megan said Playboy magazines. Okay. Obviously. Yeah. I can't believe you guys found these. TLC, Crazy Sexy Cool. This is so true. Like, it seems like such an innocent album, but they're really just talking about sex the whole time. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it doesn't seem like an innocent album. They talk about sex, HIV, like, gangs, mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff, and we just safe assumed it was... And stuff. They're <laughs> the big safe sex advocates, I remember, but we were, like, too little to really know about that, but that's what was popular. Yeah, we just listened We liked to the music, sing. and yeah. That's what's on the radio. We're big radio. Listen, you know, listen to the radio all the time. Our parents were definitely big music heads, mm -hmm. you know, so we were heavily influenced by music all the time, all throughout mm -hmm. the day. You know, we were little kids listening to adult music. That's mm -hmm. just how it was. Totally. Oh, uh, somebody said like Michael Myers, like um. Movies. Oh, the movies. Yeah, oh. scary movies. I was like five years old. I was watching Freddy Krueger. That mm -hmm. was like my favorite thing. I'd be scared to death. I couldn't make it through the whole movie, but I I liked him as a character. And he was mm -hmm. like cool with the fingers. <laughs> <laughs> it was just cool stuff. You know, I liked all the Michael Myers. Candyman. Yeah, Candyman. It was like from Chicago. We were in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So it was like kind of hidden home. We knew like what Cabrini Green was mm -hmm. and where it was. So it was kind of hidden home. It was like, but it was like a killer movie. Mm -hmm. We we're just young. Really shouldn't have been watching about that. It just made things seem okay all the time in our life. So yeah. Just got to say, my parents let us watch horror movies. My favorite was Child's Play. Yeah. Oh, Chucky. my God. Yes. We watched this, too. Definitely. When Chucky came out as little kids, like, we we're the size of Chucky. So he was, like, totally relatable. He's, oh, that's my little friend. And he goes killing. Like, yep. <laughs> it's just stuff. I, you know, all this stuff runs in my mind all the time, killing and things like But I will never do anything no, like that. I, I, just, I like to be entertained by that type of stuff. No, I know. And it started as I was a little kid. So pretty young. But that's, you know, what our parents liked. Mm -hmm. He was watching Child's Play and Freddy Krueger. So. Yeah, they didn't filter anything. Yeah, they wanted want us to hang out on the couch and watch yeah. it all together. So I actually, we were raised in this environment of watching and listening to things that we shouldn't have. So, mm -hmm. of course, I raised Julian in the same environment of him watching things that he shouldn't have. So when he was like five years old, he really, really, really got into Fight Club. And I 
know that it's not appropriate for my little baby five-year-old but it was such a good movie and I was appreciating that he was appreciating like good films and he um which was fine he loved it he could recite it and he watched it back to back it was so fine until one day my little five-year-old came to me and told me that he wanted to start a fight club mm -hmm. and then I'm like okay Main yeah maybe <laughs> maybe I, he should not be watching this um so yeah also we watch pulp fiction all the time oh, yeah pulp fiction was definitely my favorite movies i was stupid young when it came out mm -hmm. under 10 years old mm -hmm. it was one of my dad's <laughs> favorite movies so he had it playing when it came out as soon as it was on like vhs we had the tape and we were watching that guys and then things that we didn't even understand like the whole bruce willis scene I didn't understand until I watched that when I was like 20 years old. Well, see, I don't know. From being a guy to a girl is a little different. At my, like being myself, I knew kind of everything that was going on, even at my little young age. But I just took it as normal, regular stuff because that's how, <laughs> how it was. I understood everything that was going on, but I was just exposed to it and it was fine. It didn't really didn't mess me up yeah. or nothing. It's I mean, I didn't, I wasn't phased by it because I was too young to understand it. But when I was older, I'm like, why the fuck? Was my parents allowing this? Why did they think this was okay? Right, as a girl, it's different. Yeah. Uh, Don says Ren and Stimpy. Do you remember Ren and Stimpy? I know Stimpy. Ren and Stimpy. Oh they God. did a lot of nose picking and booger flicking and type of nasty <laughs> yeah. stuff. They were pretty entertaining, but also that was like the time of the Simpsons when they were popping. I like preferred the Simpsons mm -hmm. and Beavis and Butthead over Ren and Stimpy. I definitely yeah. like Ren and Stimpy too. They were, they had a lot of more adult, like, um, you know, subliminal line, you know, mm -hmm. jokes and stuff like that in Ren and Stimpy that were like maybe like sexual orientated and stuff mm -hmm. that were like low key. They tried to make it real low key, mm -hmm. like kind of how Disney movies sometimes. Yeah, make things exactly. Real low key. Like, yeah, stuff that goes over the kid's head, but it's still interesting for adults. Somebody said Mortal Kombat. That was a oh video God. game. Yeah, we didn't really talk about any video games. And Mortal Kombat was one of the biggest, you know, games to change the game environment. They were the ones with the blood, with the fatalities. Mm -hmm. They had the, ga the game banned. When it was like originally out mm -hmm. it was banned from a lot of people and we had the game i had sega and we were playing that mm -hmm. it was nothing absolutely i was kicking her butt every day <laughs> she didn't want it and i was just bloodying her up fatality all and time. julian plays this game still so i know it's not appropriate but it's whatever yeah marshall mathers lp oh god eminem came out i was a fan instantly like mm -hmm. i seen my name is hi my name is and i was just hooked from then and he mm -hmm. was definitely his uh his content is you know, not for the kids. 97 though, Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah. You yeah. know, that's all his fans really are kids, but it's just people are just exposed mm -hmm. to adult stuff. Mm -hmm. but, but kids sell things. Oh, I know. Kids, kids buy <laughs> They things. want to hear what is inappropriate, mm -hmm. and we definitely... Controversy sells. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely in that. We were allowed to just listen and watch what we wanted, so that was pretty cool. Another show that I used to watch that was... It was age appropriate, I think. I mean, I watched it when I was like 14 was Dawson's Creek. Oh, Dawson. But then um, in the very first episode, Joey asked Dawson how many times he walks the dog. And as a kid, I really thought she meant like how many times does he take a dog for a walk? And he was like, I'm not going to tell you that. And he was like so mad. And then it wasn't until I rewatched the show as an adult. And I'm like, oh, my God. Why was I watching this? I mean, I was 14, so that's I... School was popular. It's not that. In school, everybody yeah. talking about it, so you got to be part of it, too. Dawson was that stuff back in the day. What we should have been doing is watching Power Rangers or Barney, but instead we were watching Blood In, Blood Out. Oh, yeah, Blood In, Blood Out. That's fun <laughs> stuff. Yep, I fooled Blood In, Blood Out. I've seen that when I was, like, probably five or six years old or something. Oh, my God. And I only seen it from, like, the middle. I was like, oh, man, that movie's crazy. And then I remember it was like on the, the VHS. It was like on the two pack. It was so long of a movie. Oh my God. <laughs> so then I, I seen the end of it only. So then I was on the hunt for like five or some years to see the beginning of it. I finally seen it. It was pretty awesome. Blood That's in, so blood crazy. out. My crazy life. Yeah. It's a good movie. Check it out. But when I was five or six, it might not have been age appropriate. So no. <laughs> that's what we're talking about today. The media, like, you know, TV, music, and movies. Or do you guys remember Cruel Intentions? This was my motherfucking jam. I watched this movie back to back to back. Ryan Phillippe was my baby daddy. And that was so inappropriate. First of all, children shouldn't even be acting like this. But they're, like, trying to sleep with each other, and they're on drugs, and I just thought that was so cool. Yeah, it was a good movie. <laughs> it was cool, and then the two chicks were making out and stuff, so I definitely watched that movie, movie a few times as well. There you go. 
Cruel Intentions. The the sequels weren't as good. No, they were terrible. Garbage. Watching Family Guy. Oh yeah, we ain't talking about. Oh Family yeah. Guy. Family Guy is most little kids. All the little kids around me, it's like their favorite cartoon. Mm-hmm. But it's totally adult cartoon. Mm-hmm. Some of the stuff, especially in the newer seasons, it's like damn. They yeah. put that. They let that slide on the censors. <laughs> I know. Back in the little day uh, when we were little kids. The Simpsons was the one that was pushing, you know, the buttons all the time, and I guess Beavis and Butthead. But now, if you watch some old episodes of The Simpsons compared to new episodes of Family Guy, it's like crazy what yeah. these little kids are watching. Mm-hmm. Everybody's desensitized. Yeah, I don't know. It's all sex, and um, <laughs> and that's that makes me think of something else. Family Feud with Steve Harvey. I love it. That's one of my favorite shows. I watch almost every day. But around here, we call it like sexual feud because all the questions are sexual based. Oh, and stuff. I know. And back in the day, it wasn't like that. No, that's so true. <laughs> they like purposely like have the question so that it elicits an inappropriate yeah. response. Which is, it's funny. It gets good results. But if you're watching it with the family, like we did when we were little kids, family feud, it's just kind of not age appropriate. So inappropriate. It's- oh, Jamie said dirty dancing. She gets an abortion. Okay. No, yes. I didn't realize like that whole scene because it's like implied yeah. you don't know what they're doing until you're older and you're like they did good with that though yeah. so little kids could still watch it and not really you know know what's going on that's fine because that's a very popular movie mm-hmm. a lot of dancing like girls that like dancing were able to see that movie mm-hmm. had that scene but they kept it low key so that was good so we'll do one last round of like reading your comments and then we're gonna go but we really want to know And now that you have this question in your repertoire, next time you guys are sitting around, you have nothing to talk about. Maybe table talk. You'll be inspired to have some table talk. Don't be antisocial. Do some table talk. (laughs) Talk with your friends about random stuff. Then you just get to know them a little bit better. Keep it. Keep it going. Keep the mood going. My husband says Tom and Jerry. (laughs) And I can see they're very violent. Yes, you're right. They're super violent. violent. Running around all the time. There was uh, smoking too. There was some smoking scenes. Oh yeah. For those little guys, and that was a little kid. You know, cartoon. I got some stuff over here. Jerry Springer. Oh my God, Jerry we Springer. Sure. Yes, that was mad appro- inappropriate. Like one hundred percent. Every episode. But I love that show. Day. Jenny Jones, Ricky Lake. Oh yeah, watch that. She had <laughs> All of that. it. Why not? All of it. Howard Stern. Over oh here. my God, yeah. Like Man Cow. Yes, in the Man, Man Cow. That dude. They're saying Tom and Jerry is super racist. I oh. think I need to rewatch Tom. There and was Jerry. some blackface stuff going on on there. It was weird. I mean. Yeah, they did smoke in a cartoon. Oh, my God. This is like glass shattering right now. They I didn't really realize it. DMX. Ozzy Osbourne. We just listened. We were, you know, able to listen to all the stuff that our parents were listening to. There was mm-hmm. no filter on it. So it shaped us into the people we are today. <laughs> Some people, <laughs> yeah. you know, they're, they're very protective of their kids and they don't let them see a lot of stuff. But we were able to see a lot. Yeah, of we so were It's just how you choose to be a parent and how you grow up. It all determines how you're going to probably be as a person in one way or another so ozzy osbourne yes yeah black sabbath even nightmare before christmas i guess is questionable they watched the jokers and the other day one of them asked what a camel toe was oh Oh, my god right it's funny when kids ask some (laughs) stuff it's too funny oh no that makes me think of um, how i figured out things early i was listening to one of my favorite songs Baby Got Back by Sir Makes a Lot. And I knew all the words <laughs> like I still know today. It's probably a lot of people's jam. Baby Got Back. And um, I remember it was my anaconda don't want none unless you got buns, hun. And so I was like, I was rapping. I was singing it. I was a little kid. And then I was like, Dad, what does anaconda mean? And instead of filtering it, <laughs> telling it, you know, an anaconda is a snake. But my dad, he gave me the meaning pertaining to the song. Oh, my God. He said, it's a big old dick. <laughs> <laughs> and I was a little kid, so he told me what's up. So then that's how I started deciphering. I was like, oh, it means that. <laughs> and then I figured out what an anaconda was a snake. But then I figured out how. Oh my God. <laughs> I figured out how, you know, it's a metaphor. Yeah. You know, an, 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 double entendre type of thing. So that's when I just made me more interested in music because they always do mm-hmm. double entendres. They always got underlying mm-hmm. symbols, stuff like that. That it's gets like me real interested. Yeah, I like figuring stuff out like mm-hmm. that a lot. We finally got the mention of two live crew over here. Yes. Pop, that Everything. Pop, pop. Why? I had, Why? I had all the CDs. I don't know. I was seven years old. <laughs> the whole collection from the 80s. I don't know. It was like my dad's CDs or he came up on mm-hmm. someone's CD collection. And I got like all the rap CDs out of it because that's what I liked. He took all the rock and roll CDs and I started listening to them. It's two live crew. They talking about pop that pussy. Mm-hmm. And they talking about all the stuff. 
I was interested. I was like, hell yeah. Super I was bumping appropriate. That all I know. the time. And I pretty much had the reins of the music in the house. So she was listening to it too. We were just bumping <laughs> that all the time. And I liked it. It was fun. Yeah. Oh, Dawn song. said like, you know, so much R&B, like Usher. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. And e Nice and Slow, or even like I'll Make Love to You by Boys to Men. Like, yes, mm -hmm. it seems like such a beautiful love song. Like, no. They're talking about intercourse, and we're it. singing it at, you know, seven years old. Step back, you're dancing kind of <laughs> close. I feel a little <laughs> coming through. I know. Or Pony. Yeah, come ride it. Yeah, like, come Good on. Good songs, but it's definitely innuendo. <laughs> they use the innuendo. And it's like super obvious ones, too. Yeah, but that's fun. That's what makes a good song. They've been doing that since a long time with songs. Yeah. And right. if you could make a song that sounds, you know, good for everyone to hear, but it really has the underlying innuendo stuff, different meanings, that's when you got to hit. Those are good songs. Like Baby It's Cold Outside, apparently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's an <laughs> oldie, boy. They've been doing that forever. All right. Well, we're going to wrap it up. Make sure you follow Mikey on his Instagram stone under cold cold under, underscore at stone, stone <laughs> underscore cold underscore kicks. kicks and what's your youtube it's at stone cold kicks yep you'll so. see my beautiful face right on the home page <laughs> there's like a little stone cold emoji you know for my avatar guy there you go stunning the rock <laughs> and my guy has on space jam so that's, that's how you know that you're it's in him. the right place so thank you guys for watching thank you for being on my video with me oh, thank you for you know, bringing me on the video. Something See you next different. time.